God gave me a word which I think a lot of people might like the idea of rest for the believer <sighs> rest for the believer on Sunday the 1st of uh, July our friend Ruth Whitehead from New Zealand gave us a word about rest she said in Genesis 1 3 it says and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light and it was good and God divided the light from the darkness he called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day and as Ruth said they start their day at dusk they start their day at 6 p.m. their day starts then so God decided your day is going to start with a time of rest because you see all the Jewish families now start their day, their, their date changes at 6 p.m. to the following day so the human day the God day is finished, he's done his bit now the human day starts with rest because God has already done all that is needed to be done that's an important message for us to get hold of God's already done it all when Jesus said it is finished he meant I've done it all I've done all you asked me to do Father there's nothing else to be done all the people have to do now is believe it and we're in that place now so I, I love the fact that it starts with a time of rest and then in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 said therefore since the promise remains of entering his rest let us fear lest any of you seem to come short of it for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them but the word that they heard was not, did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it the promise was first given to the Israeli people and now it's given to us but the promise is you can enter my rest that's God's promise to us and he said also let us fear lest you might come short of it now that's not talking about the terror kind of fear but it's the kind of fear that Pastor Janet and I recognised when we first started this church we thought oh my goodness we are going to be preaching and people's lives are going to be affected by what we preach Lord help us to get it right Amen. Yeah. and that's to me that's the kind of fear whoa I don't want to get it wrong Lord well, I'm going to get as close as I can to you and hear from you as closely as I can it's not fear it's not scared but it's wanting to get it right for God having the awesome reverence for him now the gospel was preached to the people but they didn't receive it why didn't they receive it? they didn't mix faith with it what that means is when you hear a word from God if you don't mix faith with it and say that word from now on I believe is 100% correct and it is mine that's how you mix faith with it you say I believe that word, that word is for me I am having it, it is my word Amen. and if you don't mix faith with it it's just another word it's just another bunch of words in the Bible if you don't actually make a, a statement to yourself and to God saying yeah I believe that you said you know you would bless me, I, I believe you will yeah I'm having that, that's mine so if anything comes my way that looks like it's not blessing it won't be you because you said you would bless me and I receive it we need to mix everything we have with faith and I've said before that there are quite a lot of verses in the Bible that are my verses you can have them if you want but they're mine yeah? when he says he would supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus that's my verse I don't know if it's going to be yours as well but it's definitely mine I have mixed faith with that I've taken that word the word off the paper or the word that I heard people preach I've took that word and I've took my faith and I've mixed the two together I have now something that is unbreakable can't be changed is always going to be there for me that word is mine Amen? That's what we need, we need to have that word so to be able to enter into his rest it says you have to mix the word with faith 
Then later on in that same chapter, in verse 9, it says, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest, God's rest, has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. This rest is always, has always been and always will be available to the people of God. If you're someone who knows Jesus, you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this rest is available to you. But it says there, when we enter into God's rest, we stop doing our own works. When somebody's already done something for you, do you now have to do it? If you were busy one day and you said, look, <clears throat> could you do me a big favour? Here's my stuff, could you, when you're going out, could you go to the bank for me and put my money in the bank? Since you're going to the same bank anyway. And I said, yeah, sure. Would you then have to go to the bank and put your money in? No. Because it's already been done. These things have already been done for us. We already have. God's already done these works. Why should we continue doing them? If God's already made it possible for us to have salvation and blessing and prosperity and healing, why should we try struggling to get what's already been provided for us? When we enter into his rest, we stop doing things ourselves. Because he's already done it all. It is already ours. Entering into his rest means recognizing that God has already done all the work. We just enter into that completed work. How much work do you think God is still doing now to get people healed? Do you think God is doing any work to get people healed now? The answer is no. He's not doing anything. He's done it. By his stripes you were healed. It's been done. You just have to receive that now. You have to enter into the rest of the fact that word is true, what's true is mine, and I'm believing and I'm receiving that word. God, doesn't, God is not about healing people nowadays. People could talk about people getting healed. Honestly, let me get the words correct. You don't get healed, you receive the healing. It's already been given to you, it's yours already. You just grab it one day and say, that's mine. I grab that mine, it's mine. When you lay hands on somebody to be healed, they receive the healing that's already been bought and paid for. They enter into the rest and actually believe that when you lay hands on them, they will receive something. What do they receive? They receive the ability to trust God that his word is true and if by his stripes you were healed, then I'm healed today. I'm having that in Jesus' name. That's mine. I don't know if that's your word. That's mine, that's for sure. So we enter a rest called already healed. Yeah? Or you can enter into a rest called needs already met. Or you can enter into a rest called he supplies everything. Whatever it is you need, you can enter into that rest place where you don't have to struggle to try to get it anymore because you recognize he's already given it to you. <clears throat> how many of us wake up in the morning it might still be a little bit dark not this time of year but in the winter time you wake up in the morning it's still dark pitch black and you're thinking please Lord let the sun come up today <laughs> how many people pray that yeah. why don't you pray that because you know he's already done the work he's put everything in place so that every single morning the sun's going to come up there might be a bit of cloud there but behind the darkest cloud is still the sun. He's already done the work. He wants us to enter into that rest. You didn't realize, did you, that you've entered into a rest there? Every morning you don't, you, you just get up and you know the sun's going to come up. You just know the sun's going to come up. Why do you? Because you trust God. You trust that if He said He's going to do it, He's going to do it. And the evening and the morning were the first day, and there you are, you trust God. We need to just rest and relax and just, oh, just be a bit relaxed. I can't get to stay on it. I, I, I didn't, I asked it, I put something in, I must have put something on that slide to make it move. But there you go. You just, 
talk about rested and relaxed. I like the fact that we can be relaxed. Would you agree? But then he says in verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. The disobedience is not entering in and not mixing the word with faith that we spoke of earlier on. Discipline, it means to make haste, to exert yourself, to strive after. You are saying, when you're seeking diligently after this rest, you are saying, I am having that rest, no matter what it takes, no matter how many times I have to read the Bible and pray, no matter how many times I have to watch the God channel and get this stuff into me, no matter how many times I have to get somebody to pray with me and help me, I am getting it in Jesus' name. Now that's being diligent. That's saying, I don't, I don't care when everything else is going on. Or other people can strive and work and work and work if they want. If I'm going to work, I'm going to work towards receiving my rest. Amen? Because not being diligent itself, says here, means you could fail. How do you fail? You don't get the rest. You end up having to do it all yourself again. Because you're not letting him do it. We're again, we've got to work hard at entering into that already done rest. Entering into that place where we recognise every word is already done in Jesus' name. Working to renew our mind to this truth. Working to grab the word, mix it with our faith and say that is mine I'm stepping over into that rest today. I'm not even going to try anymore to try and get it because it's already mine in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Matthew 11, Jesus said in verse 28, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. When we draw near to Jesus, he will give us his rest. Especially when we're laboring to do it, when we're trying hard to do it, he will give us that rest because he wants to help us to receive. Take my yoke upon you. Join with me in this venture. I must find a way why that picture is not working like it should, but never mind, you can see it for a moment there. It's two cattle in a double yoke. In the Bible when it's talking about yokes, that's the only kind it's talking about. A double yoke. Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Never in the Bible is a yoke referring to, you might have seen donkeys years ago, about a milkmaid with a yoke over her shoulder, two things and a pail on each one. It's never, the Bible never talking about that. The Bible is always talking about a double one. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, he's saying, here I am, you will get under that side. You, wherever I go, you will go. Whatever blessings I receive, you will receive. Wherever I am blessed, you will receive that blessing. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, is it going to be difficult to carry that yoke? Well, let me say it was probably made by the most expert carpenter there ever was. When he says my yoke, that's not one he bought. It means it's one he made. And Jesus made a yoke that will fit him on one side and you on the other side. So when he's talking about take my yoke upon you, he's saying let's you and me do this together. Let's be, you and me do this so together that the slightest move from me, Jesus said, and you will follow me. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to be in that place where we trust those moves of his. Whatever he wants to do, we will go. It says learn from Jesus because he is gentle and lowly. And he says, you will find rest for your soul. He 
you will find rest for your soul. I'll get the right script here in a minute. Won't go. God wants us to know that our soul, our mind, our will and our emotions will have rest. Our mind will have rest because it will decide for Jesus. It will be renewed to the truth of the word of God. Our will will be blessed by Jesus and have rest because we will automatically decide for Jesus once we've got this rest. And our emotions, well, if your emotions aren't lined up with Jesus, they're going to control you and manipulate you and make you do what you don't really want to do. You don't want to go there. So in 2 Corinthians 4.17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What is our light affliction? Well, I believe in the context of what we've been talking about today, it's striving, being diligent, striving to re-enter into this rest. And he says, when we are doing that, we will receive an eternal and amazing amount of glory from him in our lives, so we can glorify him. While we look not, only while, we continue to look in the unseen realm. The unseen realm is the permanent realm. Everything you can see around you is subject to change. If you don't believe that the things around you are subject to change, then you just grab anything you like and put it somewhere and forget about it for a few years and go and have a look at it. It will have either gone rusty, fallen apart, gone all soggy, rotted away. Nothing is permanent. Look at these wonderful houses that people have built over the years. If they're not properly looked after and properly maintained all the time, they just fall apart. Everything you can see is temporary. The things that you can't see, your faith, your blessing, your love, grace and mercy coming from God, is all permanent. We've got to see that. And finish off with this scripture here in Luke chapter 8, verse 30, 23. Crossing the Sea of Galilee. And as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and are walking, saying, Master, we are perishing. And he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Jesus rebuked the wind, he rebuked the raging sea, and they were both calm. The wind, the wind and the raging sea ceased. The word ceased is the root word for the word rest. When the negative stuff stops, that's when you get your rest. Winds and storm still come. They still come at us all the time. But the winds and the storm ceased when they heard his words. Would you agree with that? Yeah. When they heard Jesus' words, the wind and the storm just stopped. And they still do. If you happen to be speaking the words of God, then the words of Jesus, then the wind must stop, the storm must stop, it must do what it's taught. <clears throat> Too many people pray and tell Jesus what the storm is saying to them. Instead, speak to the storm and tell them Jesus' words. You be quiet, still in Jesus' name. Speak to the storm and tell it, I'm not having this, you be quiet in the name of Jesus. I am not moved by you. I'm going back to sleep. See, Jesus, the only reason Jesus woke up to sort this storm out is because his, his friends, his disciples, were frightened. If they'd been like him and got, whoa, storm, what's the problem here? Jesus is in the boat with us, we can't sink. Let's just carry on going to the other side. If they'd have thought like that, he would have probably stayed asleep. But because his people and his friends were scared and worried, he got up, he rebuked the storm. See, if you can 
trust that when storms come and you speak the words of Jesus, the storm will just disappear. Then you've already got your rest in Jesus. You can say, I am already at peace because I have faith in his word. And if his word says it's done, then it's done. And I enter into that rest today and I make the decision that when anything comes my way, I will hear the word, I will mix it with faith, I will enter into that rest and I will receive all the blessings that accompany it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.